How's it going, Reef Keepers? So, not even that long ago, it used to be, you know, considered common knowledge in the hobby that you did not chase pH. You know, you heard it said everywhere, you saw it said everywhere on the forums, don't chase pH, don't chase pH. Well, in light of, you know, research that has, you know, expanded over the last few years, um, it's become pretty abundantly clear that pH is of critical importance and me raising my pH has made a noticeable impact. I mean, I've seen coral growth and, you know, just like coral health and behavior increase significantly due to the measures that I took to increase pH on my tank. And I, like many reefers, uh, I have a house that is in a warm climate and cold climate people have this problem too, where for large parts of the year, your house is all closed up. And, and if you don't have an automatic air exchange system, which are very expensive and not super common, uh, you basically struggle with pH like from the outset. And especially if you have like multiple family members, you have, you know, pets that are mammals, all of the oxygen that they intake and the carbon dioxide that they expel is going to suppress the pH of your tank and become problematic. It was problematic to me uh, to the point that my pH trough for the low point was sliding below 7.8 pretty consistently, like just below it. And below 7.8, corals can start to really degrade. So I took a bunch of measures to curb what was happening and had great success with them. And I'm going to kind of walk through them. The first thing that I did was I ensured that the outlets from my return pump were angled such that they were creating surface or breaking surface tension of the water. And I also angled pumps up like this emergency pump over here so that it would break surface tension and just create an environment on the tank surface that was, you know, not crashing waves or anything, but you know, turbulent enough to break that surface tension. That allows oxygenation of the water and it's a critical thing. So if you don't have that going on, try to get that going on. The second thing that I would uh, highly recommend, even if you have a nano tank, because now nano tanks are popular enough that there are product lines specifically geared toward them in gear categories like skimmers. Get a skimmer on the tank. It's shooting bubbles through the water, breaking tons of tension um, all day long. I mean, that, that alone will probably solve low, low pH for a lot of people. So I highly recommend getting a skimmer on the tank. Um, I went a step further <laughs> with my skimmer because I still was struggling, even with surface tension broken up on top of the water, even with a you know decent skimmer in my tank. You can see the airline is connected to like a larger line that goes out. That line goes behind the, this cabinet here next to my tank. And it connects right here to a CO2 scrubber or a CO2 scrubber scrubbing media container rather. And in it, all these little, you know, uh, this like white gravel, that's CO2 absorption media. And I switch that out every like three weeks, probably not enough. Um, I don't know that I see a ton of boost from it, but it is proven to work. And even if it gets me, you know, just a, a nudge on my pH, it's probably worth it. You can get a huge bucket of it for pretty cheap. So um, after this measure, I have another measure. You can see that this line goes down and into a little chase right here. And this coming on the heels of my last video about not angering your spouse with reefkeeping is kind of ironic, but that right there is a hole that I drilled in the door frame. And that hole that I drilled allows the air line that connects to the skimmer to go outside. So I'm pumping in oxygen rich air from outside and have, well, I'm having it sucked in rather by the skimmer and it's passing through CO2 absorption media on the way. So that probably is a pretty significant boost for me. And in fact, once I drilled that hole to the outside, I, I recall seeing at least like a 0.1 increase in my trough or, or increase above the trough which is good finally i've got this right here so this is my calcwasser reactor my diy calcwasser reactor 
doesn't matter if you get an expensive one, you know, that sits in your sump and, you know, runs your ATO water through it. Doesn't matter if you do a DIY, a DIY one the way that I did. Um, doesn't matter if you have a big tub that you just create saturated kelk solution in and periodically refill. Kelk washer, starting kelk washer and, you know, having it really take effect on my tank was probably the biggest pH boost that I was able to do or the one that created the most consistency, right? So like consistently my trough now bottoms out at like 8.0, 8.1 and my high points 8.3, 8.4. Just depending how much I have the windows open or you know how many people are spending how much time in the house, etc. But really never does it go below 8.0. And now I'm in a good safe zone. Now I'm in a good place. But again, like so many other reefers who struggle with this on a daily basis, I mean, I started out struggling bad with pH and it took all of these different little factors combining to create a stable, like reasonably high pH situation where I saw like my coral health and growth consistently do well. So um, I highly suggest taking at least some of these measures it, and I, I assume nobody can get an auto air exchanger, but if you can, <laughs> you don't have to take any of these measures <laughs> if you can afford to have one of those installed. Um, but I think most of us are not going to go that route. So some combination of these factors that I just went through or implementing all of them, I assure you, uh, it's going to help for sure. And uh, you'll see good results from it. So, all right, guys, just wanted to uh, run through that and uh, help anybody who was struggling with it like I was. Have a good weekend.